Hello all, how are you doing? Welcome to my channel. I'm going to do something a little different today because I went through my oil painting supplies and I know a lot of people are wanting to do things in a more environmentally friendly way and health wise we want to do things better so I went through went through all the bottles that I have of different things just to see what I had because I want to use things up too sometimes some of them it's been so long since I've used them I wasn't sure if it was to speed up drying or slow down drying and I learned some things so I thought I would share that that, that with you all I have notes here first off this came this came in a set that I got from Holbein and it's just labeled strong medium number 403 now I had trouble finding this online but it is supposed to it's supposed to be a drying accelerator and it's supposed to be an alkaline resin the, the problem with it that I saw was that it has kind of a brown tint to it so you have to be careful when you use it with light colors because it can kind of make them not look so bright so I, I, I'm probably going to try and use this up I love the Holbein brand so and these tubes I, I, I have never used that I can recall anyway anything that was in like a tube like a gel or paste or whatever the other one that I had was uh, Gamblin and I'm pretty sure I got this with a set too this is supposed to be eco friendly and non-toxic this has a moderate drying rate so I'm assuming it won't dry as fast as this will but it's supposed to also be glossy so I did mention that this was made at their wind powered farm or wind powered plant in Portland, Oregon. So I thought that was kind of cool. The other one I have, and it's an old tube and I'm going to have to forgive me, but, uh, it, it's an old tube and it, it, the tube actually broke when I did that, but all this here is soft. So I'm going to probably just cut this off and, uh, find a jar or something to put the rest of this into so but this is Weber resin gel and it says it's an oil painting medium I did find this online oh by the way and I did find this online too fairly easily Gamblin is another brand that I really like you can get this size tube is 525 on Dick Blick so if it's something that you want to try it's reasonably priced and then this see how see how that's this is not the tube this is the dried resin gel see how brown it is so that really concerns me and when I looked it up it said that uh, first off a five ounce tube which is what this is is $15.89 on Jerry's Artorama. The problem with it is it, it accelerates dry time. Synthetic resin gel. It says it's supposed to be great for um, glazing effects. But the fact that that is so brown. I now know this is an old tube. This was one that was given to me by a kind friend whose mother has, had passed away um, and she had a lot of painting painting materials but it says it accelerates drying time may and restores buttery 
brush response. Accelerates drying time. It's supposed to be non-toxic also. And I think a lot of people use these, from what I read of the reviews on like Amazon, a lot of people use this in like painting classes. So I don't know. I'm, a, I'm skeptical. I don't know if I want to use that. I think one thing I forgot I had, and I'm trying to do these by group. So those, those three were the only tubes that I had. Um, the resin gel, I, I, I'm, I don't know about, but these two, I probably, these two I'll definitely try out. And I forgot I had this. It's a walnut oil. It's supposed to be better to use than linseed oil, which is what I traditionally used. And I switched to poppy seed oil because I read something or other about it being less yellowing and you know blah blah blah. So I've got this poppy seed oil, and this is glass, by the way. But anyway, first the walnut oil. The walnut oil by M. Graham. This is 1013 on Dick Blick, which is not bad at all. But just look how clear that is. I mean, yeah, it's got a little bit of a yellow tint to it. But when you figure the percentage that you put into your paints, and if you compare, yeah, see, they're very, yeah, anyway, I digress. The company, according to the company, um, Renaissance Master Artist used this type of oil more than linseed oil. But I this is pure alkali and it's refined oil pressed from walnuts it extends oil color for increased flow non-yellowing and this slows the drying which is why i did the poppy seed oil so this will slow the drying if you like to work wet and wet or a la prima and i don't think this had much odor. It just smells kind of like cooking oil. But that was. And then the poppy seed oil. Um, I looked online. This was 1943 on Jerry's Artorama. This was 1013, by the way, on Dick Blick. And it is eight ounces. This is this is eight ounces also. But this poppy seed oil is supposed to be good to use with pale colors and an ex excellent color retention. Again, you often use it in Ala Prima or Wet and Wet. But I had I don't know where I had read it at. I, I if I if I figure it out, I will I will post it in the description. But I heard that this is better to use health-wise. But I would think if this is poppy seed oil, I don't know that there, you know, there would be more just personal preference maybe? But anyway, I'm going to start using these. And then the last in that was good old I'm sorry my bottle looks so rough <laughs> there you can see it it's just linseed oil uh, Utrecht and this is an old bottle I think I've had this one for probably 15 years and you can see it's the yellow yellowness of it this has less of a tendency to yellow or crack on your work the walnut oil. The linseed oil, you can buy this today for $12.47 on Dick Blick. The problem I have with it, again, is the yellowing. This is a refined oil. It is derived from the seeds of the flax plant. 
You mix it with colors to give them a more, more transparent fluid consistency and extent is what it says for linseed oil. It is made in New York, in Brooklyn, and that, that was recent information. It wasn't the same age as the bottle. <laughs> if I had a choice, because I've been using this poppy seed oil, if I would avoid the linseed oil and use one of these two, but I just think, I think these two would have better results in the end and over time. It's, I mean, just look how it, yeah, I don't know. I, I really like using this poppy oil. I had forgotten that I had the woman oil, so I'm going to be, so I'm going to be trying this out on my next painting. Then the next group of things I have are, these are older bottles, again. I can remember I bought, I don't know how many bottles, that it was like a, a lot, a, a, like an auction lot of Grumbacher mediums. And these are the ones that I have left. I think there's five different bottles here. And this first one I wanted to, is Copal Painting Medium. And again, it's been so long since I used that. Or, this is supposed to speed drying, improves flow, and increases the gloss. And you can buy this jar, size jar of it, uh, the two and a half ounce, blue an ounce, for nine seventy five on Dick Blick. And if you'll have to excuse me, I have to refer to my notes. This is made from a modern synthetic copal resin. It can cause yellowing and darkening of colors over time. This was, I guess this was actually created for toll painters. It is not intended to be used on something that is, um, you want to be archival or you're supposed to dilute this, speak words hard, with uh, gum spirits or a, what they recommended was uh, Grumteen, which is like a Grumbucker brand solvent. I don't know that I'll ever use this. I may try and find somebody that does coal painting and say, this next one is a Grumbucker oil painting medium three. I feel like I'm doing a commercial. I, I, again, I had no idea. This is, for this size bottle, the two and a half fluid ounces is available on Amazon for 14, 14.68. It dries rapidly, dilutes oil color to speed drying time and improves flow. Especially effective in reducing the drying time of slow drying colors such as alizarin crimson and cadmium colors. Only dilute with turpentine. Petroleum-based solvents and odorless paint thinners are not compatible with this product. So again, I don't know that I'll use this one. The next one is a stand oil. This one says it can be diluted by with any conventional oil painting medium. The thing I found interesting and I had to read on it, is, do you see how thick that is? It's kind of like honey. It's like really thick. And I thought maybe I had just had it on my shelf too long or something, but that's the way it's supposed to be. So we're learning this together. So but the stand oil intrigues me. It's a heavy polymerized linseed oil. It eliminates brush strokes and creates an enamel-like finish when working with oil paints. It's slow drying and it improves the fluidity of the oil paints. It may be diluted with any conventional oil painting solvent and it is made in the U.S. 
it says that it is made by heating pure linseed oil to high temperatures in the absence of air. We'll have to try that one too. I need to separate these. I've got them all, all together over here. This one, I think a lot of people have heard of. And I, so I wanted to talk about it a little bit. This is Damar, Damar, varnish. The problem is it yellows really bad. It's, okay, bear with me. It's made with the resin of Diptero Carpacea. Forgive me if I pronounce that incorrectly. A family of tropical rainforest trees. It's a varnish uh, when mixed with oil paint mediums, thins the paint, increases its transparency, and speeds drying time. Used as a top coat, it seals and adds a glossy finish. But it yellows considerably as it ages, and its predicted lifespan is 25 to 50 years. So if you put this on a, this one, I've used this one a lot, um, a retouch varnish. You know how when you're painting oils and the, especially the dark colors, when they start to dry, they sort of sink back. They, they don't, they lose their luster. Yeah. This is what you would use on it to bring it back. The thing I like about this, um, I, my notes say, uses, used to brighten uneven areas of oil paintings. Excellent to use for protecting paintings until they can get their final varnish. It's made from the oil of turpentine. UV re resistant gloss varnish comes in liquid and spray forms. You can get this in a like a spray can. You want to apply it in very thin layers. It does ensure it if you put this on a painting once it's dry to the touch an oil painting this will ensure that the paint can still breathe to dry correctly until you can put a long-term varnish on, on it this I like and it's not it's yellow but um, and it says that the painting should be left at least a month then this last one I love this stuff. I learned about this online like everybody else. It's Gamblin Gambar. And this this particular jar is in gloss, but you can get it in different finishes. I mean, it's like it looks like water. There's no yellowing, there's no mm, French kiss. I'm trying to find my note on it. I, I did these just to be sure that I did not forget anything. Oh, there it is. <laughs> this, it's a little bit pricier. This is $21, but that isn't that bad. This is for eight and a half ounce Amazon. It's uh, $21.54. Uh, it's a synthetic resin varnish. It's similar to the Damar, Damar varnish. It's safer for the environment and for the artists themselves. And it, I mean, look at, look at this. And granted, this is older, but that, I mean, which one would you want on your painting? A lot of times when you watch uh, videos from artists that are putting their varnishing their pieces, you'll notice that this is the varnish that they'll use, this brand. So the last thing I have is this stuff. This can be used as a retouch varnish. This is relatively inexpensive. I think I even got this at my local Walmart, if I could, if I remember correctly. I don't remember the price. If I rem if I, I'll look it up and I'll put it on the screen. I know everybody's on a budget. 
but you can just once your oil paint is dry to the touch you can spray this just real lightly over it and it will help bring out the colors and it you know give it more and this is also easily removed if need be it's synthetic it does not yellow this also can be used on acrylic watercolors I've used this on some of my oil pastels sometimes you know how you set oil pastels out those of us that do oil pastels and they'll kind of harden over time or they they, they aren't as soft on the surface they're not completely dry but um, this helps sort of seal that so that it and this I've seen people also use this as fixative for a for soft pastels as well but this can be used on acrylic paint or whatnot and I don't know that I would use these no I can't this and this can be also be added to acrylic let me see what it says because I didn't I wasn't aware of this Maybe used on oil, alkyd, and acrylic paintings. Brush only. Do not spray. So you have options that are better for your work, better for you. If you want, need to varnish your work, there's this. If you want your paint to stay wet longer you've got poppy seed and walnut oil is what I would recommend if you're going to use an extender to speed the drying up I think I would use something like this I don't know that I would try any of these um, first and I trust these brands the Gamblin and the Holbein. The Holbein had a warning about using it on light colors though. And I don't think the Gamblin did. So to recap, because I tend to go around things instead of, if you are just getting started in oil paints and you want to use a medium that I would definitely recommend that you use use one of these it, if you want to if you want to dry mm -mm -mm -mm. I would recommend this one by Gamblin it's uh, non-toxic and then once you get your painting done and you want to I would recommend this just as a retouch varnish um, do take precautions not good for you to breathe go outside wear a mask if you need to whatever but if you don't need re retouch varnish i would definitely recommend this no matter what finish you get i love this stuff and you can get this off of amazon or whatnot so that is what I have for my mediums and my things that you can add with your oil paint. I did at one time, this is just um, linseed oil mixed with some mineral spirits. And so I thinned it down um, so it's ready to go. And you can mix up your own preferred mediums that way. So that is what I've got for today. So I hope this was helpful, entertaining, and maybe a little bit. Thank you for being here. I hope I inspired you to go dig through your art supplies and find some things maybe you have that you forgot you had. Get those things out and use them. Learn about them. See if it's something maybe somebody else can use if you're not going to use it. I will see you all next time. Take care and be safe. Bye-bye.